Liberalism Section The Struggle for Recognition by Colonial Peoples and Threats of Secession While the struggle for recognition waged by the servants in the metropolis was constantly countered by the threat or implementation of a coup d'etat, the more intransigent sectors of the liberal and bourgeois world reacted to the struggle for recognition waged by colonial peoples, or peoples of colonial origin, with the threat or implementation of a secession. This is a dialectic we have already analyzed in relation to San Domingo in the late 18th century and the British West Indies in the early decades of the 19th century. During the July monarchy, de Tocqueville observed that the colonists, in rejecting any abolitionist project, were denying the French parliament and government, quote, the right to take this great work in hand and carry it through, end quote. Obviously, in this context, the most striking case was the secession of the South of the United States, which affected advancing liberal slogans in defense of the natural right to self-government and the peaceful enjoyment of property. The North's military victory did not terminate the conflict. Supporters of white supremacy immediately reacted to the fleeting advent of multiracial democracy, not only with the lynchings and anti-black terrorism, unleashed by the Ku Klux Klan, but by resorting to guerrilla warfare and armed violence. In 1874, an appeal circulated in the South to found a white league to foil by any means attempts by Congress to make black emancipation effective. Quote, Our war will be interminable and merciless. In conclusion, as surely as the struggle between 1861 and 1865 was a civil war, so was the conflict from 1865 to 1877, with all the more bitterness and hatred, but less bloodshed. End quote. This second stage in the Civil War ended in a substantial victory for the South. While slavery in the strict sense was not reintroduced, a regime of terroristic white supremacy was imposed. Although formally emancipated, the Afro-Americans now embarked on one of the most tragic phases in their history. It might even be said that their condition touched a nadir. By contrast, racist dogmas and racial fundamentalism reached their zenith. A sequence of events with notable similarities to the American Civil War unfolded in Great Britain. Here, what was at stake was the emancipation not of the blacks, but of the Irish. The dominant class in Ulster reacted to the London government's decision to introduce home rule for the island, as had the southern U.S. to the challenge of central power, even when democratically elected. It threatened and prepared secession, arming a militia tens of thousands strong. While the planters across the Atlantic could not tolerate the loss of the domination guaranteed to them by the possession of human cattle, the Protestant property owners in Ireland rejected with horror the prospect of being governed at a local level by Catholic ragamuffins. In both cases, the self-government demanded was the self-government that the descendants of the settlers were summoned to enjoy, and which sanctioned white supremacy or Anglo-Protestant supremacy. In both cases, the secessionists proclaimed that they were the true inheritors of the American Revolution and the Glorious Revolution, respectively. And only the outbreak of the First World War blocked an impending war of secession in Britain. In Northern Ireland, thousands of men armed to the hilt and organized militarily were ready to go into action. End section.